Right now, I'm going to show you how to set up custom workspaces inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and welcome to another Back to Basics weekend. Today we're going to look at setting up custom workspace. So we're going to get all our panels and everything where we want. We're going to customize our menus, the toolbar, and just set up Photoshop to work exactly the way you want it to. So when you first launch Photoshop, you're going to see something like this as your workspace. Half your screen is taken up with panels. Let me let you into a secret. A lot of these panels you don't need there all the time. And in fact, most of these panels you don't need at all because you can do the same thing. For example, we've got our colors, all our colors up here. We can click on the color swatches and select them right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear these apart. So we're just going to drag everything out. And notice how these little panels in between, we can pop them open and tear them apart. Or we can grab a group here and we can drag that group. Okay, to be honest, all I need is layers, channels and paths. I'm going to drag this off to the side. It'll turn blue, release it, it's going to snap. Let's get rid of the learn panel. Let's get rid of all of those. So right now we're setting up a workspace for working with photos. So we don't need everything. So I've just got these basic minimal ones here. There's two other panels I might add in. Let's go up under the window. And then we're going to go down to the properties panel. The properties panel is very useful. Sometimes when you open it, you're going to get this whole group and all you need to do is just drag it away. Now, for example, I've got all these adjustments. You can click on these, but you can also just as easily click there to get those adjustments. You don't really need these panels open all the time. So I'm just going to close them all down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the properties panel and I'm going to drag this underneath. So we've got just our layers, channels and paths and underneath our properties. Properties is useful because right now this gives the document properties. If I go into something like an adjustment layer, notice the settings for that adjustment layer are going to appear in there. If I work on a mask, the mask settings are going to work in here. So this is a super useful menu to have open. It's context sensitive, doesn't take up a lot of space, and it's something that you can use. Another one is the libraries. I use the libraries a lot. So I'm going to dock these to the side, though. I want them to take up just a little bit of space, but be there when I need it. So if we go up and we right click on this little menu on the arrow here, we get some options and I'm going to choose the auto collapse to icons. And notice we get the name and the icon. I don't need the name. I know what it is. I'm going to click and drag and reduce it even further. So now what happens when I click on here, I can go into my library. I can go into the different libraries and then as soon as I click away, it'll collapse again. So that's saving me space. There's another panel in here I'd like. Let's go under window and I'm going to go into my brushes, but I don't really want the brushes. I want the brush settings. Both of them will open. In fact, the whole group will open quite often. So just choose the one you want and then just click these little X's to get rid of the rest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dock these underneath. So I'm just going to move it here until I see a blue square underneath release. And now if I need access to that, I can or access to the libraries click away and they're going to collapse. Great. The right hand side is set up how I want it. Let me just get rid of that hue saturation adjustment. We don't need that. All right, let's have a look on the left hand side. Here's our toolbar. I don't know if you're aware, but you can do different things with the toolbar. We can tear it out. We can have it floating. We can click this double arrow and have two column. And if we want, we can even go over here and we can dock it to this side. See where it turns blue, just release and you can have them like that or hit the double arrow, go single column and you can have all your tools and everything on that side. Personally, I don't like that because if I'm in here, it starts to cover them. So what you could do is if you wanted to have them on that side is you just drag it in between the two, hit the blue there. And now when you open these, you still have access to your tools. Personally, I like my tools on the left. So I'm quite happy with it like that and just single column. Now you can customize what's in here. So say I'm setting up a workspace just for photography. I don't need necessarily all of these tools. So why don't we click and hold on these three ellipses, choose edit toolbar. 
And this gives me all the tools. All right, so any of the tools I don't need, I'm gonna drag it over to this column, the right column, extra tools. I don't need that. I do need the move tool and the selection tools. So we're gonna scroll down here. We need all of these. Crop tools, definitely. Frame tool, you might use that. Okay, we're probably not gonna use all of these. Let's get rid of that one. I'm not really using notes much. 3D materials is for 3D. Let's just keep these three. All right, let's go down more. Pencil tools, not really something you use much when it comes to photography. Uh, we'll leave these. Let's get rid of the 3D ones. All right, that looks pretty good. And now if I click done, so now when you go over some of these menus, you're not gonna get all the other tools showing that you don't need. Of course, they're always available. If you just click and hold here, you can go edit toolbar. And of course you can bring them back. Or if you just need to access them quickly, just click and hold. And those hidden ones are just gonna appear there and you can quickly grab them if you wanna use them just once. So I'm just gonna hit cancel. Great. The other thing we wanna customize is our menus. So we're gonna choose edit. And we're gonna go down to menus. We're also gonna customize some keyboard shortcuts in a second. So let's choose menus. And if you look here, you see file, edit, image, layer, file, edit, image, layer. So these are the same tools that are available here. So if we wanna hide them, we can just go in here and we could go down and you know, things like, for example, export to arrow. If we're not doing any AR work, just hit that little I and that will hide it. So you can go down here and you can hide all the ones you might not be using, such as data sets, pasta illustrator, Zoomify, which is a web app, and we just click okay. Now, if you go under the file menu here and you go down to export, you'll notice that those options are not showing anymore and you can simplify these menus as much as you want. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna customize our keyboard shortcuts. So choose keyboard shortcuts and right now you're gonna see all the keyboard shortcuts inside of Photoshop. If you click on here, you can see all the different commands. So let me let you into a little secret. Right now I'm gonna show you how to create a keyboard shortcut cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. So what you wanna do is go down to summarize, choose where you wanna save it, somewhere on the desktop, and then click save. And notice what happens is it creates an HTML file with all the keyboard shortcuts on your computer. If you wanna save this as a PDF, just choose file, print, and then just go under here and choose save as a PDF. Instead of choosing a printer, just go down save as PDF here, give it a name, click save, and it will create that PDF for you. This is on Mac. I'm not sure how to do it on Windows, so maybe some of you Windows guys can let us know in the comments how you would do that in Windows. Now, if you wanted to set a keyboard shortcut, a custom shortcut, say for example, if we go under Select, Modify, Feather, we have to enter that. There's no easy keyboard shortcut. There is, but it's a difficult one. Let's have a look at it. Okay, let's go down to our Select menu. Let's go down to Modify, and there's Feather. Notice there's some of these other ones, smooth, expand, contract. If you wanna add a keyboard shortcut, simply click in there and then just type in a keyboard shortcut. Feather is Shift F6. That's a little bit difficult. I wanna do something easier. How about Command Shift F? So we're gonna hit the Command key, the Shift key, and the F key, and it's gonna create that keyboard shortcut. Now, if you're on Windows, that would be Shift Control F. I like that. So now we're just gonna click away and if that keyboard shortcut was taken, it'll give you a warning and then you can just choose to accept that keyboard shortcut or not. Actually, this is fade um, and it's not something I would use as much as feather. So click okay. So now let's go in here and I'm just gonna make a selection, command, shift, F. There's our feather command and now I have access to it whenever I want in this keyboard shortcut. We've now set up Photoshop to be really efficient for the task that I wanna use it for. Now I'm gonna save this as a custom workspace so I can call up this workspace and all the modified menus whenever I need it. So what we're gonna do is go up to the top right 
and we're going to click here and this is where our workspaces live. Let's go down and we're going to create a new workspace. Just need to give it a name, Colin, and we'll call it photo because we're going to be using this for photo editing. Now, if I want to include those custom keyboard shortcuts that command shift F, I would turn that on custom menus, toolbars, all of this is going to be set, hit save. And now we've got our custom workspace. All right, so here we are in our essentials. And if we ever want to go back to our custom setup, just simply click here and then choose Colin photo. Now, if I start to work and I get a little messy, which I often do, sometimes the layers panel will come out over here. Maybe I'll open a couple more panels, probably not the glyphs panel when I'm working on photo, but maybe <laughs> different things. So we get all of these all over the place and you want to clean it up. All you need to do is just go here, go back to column photo and then choose reset. And this will reset this to the workspace that I set up. So you can use this to set up particular workspaces that are laser focused on what you're doing. You could do it just photography or digital illustration, video, whatever you want, and clear out all the clutter to make it really fast for you to find the tools and the menus that you want for the different workspaces and the different tasks you might do inside of Photoshop. So I'm curious if this was useful. Um, let me know in the comments underneath if this is something that is going to help you. So what would you like to see me teach next weekend for Back to Basics Weekend? Drop your ideas in the comments underneath. So if you are new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button and you'll get new tutorials from us every single week. And every Tuesday we do our regular tutorial. Every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we do Live for Lockdown where we come together for our live stream. Love to have you join us on that. And every weekend we do our Back to Basics weekends where we take some of the basics and fundamentals of Photoshop that people just don't normally teach and we're addressing them right here. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Hey, cafe crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop. <laughs> Wait, there was a pitch right there. Wow. Hey, <laughs> subscribe button and turn on notifications. And you'll get new videos from every week. Yeah.